So I've provided uh, background on virtual memory and page tables and uh, TLB structures. Now I'll discuss how virtual memory interacts with the cache hierarchy. Okay, and before that again I have to talk about some background material. Okay, so let's assume that you have some physical memory over here. And you have your processor and let's say it has you know two different cores on it. Core 1 and Core 2 and thread T1 is executing on core 1 and thread T2 on core 2. If And you know let's also assume that they have a shared cache. Okay so now if T1 and T2 are completely independent that is if they're completely different programs then they will access completely different memory spaces right so each thread is going to have its own virtual address space okay and these virtual addresses will be mapped to completely different physical addresses because there's no single page that should be visible to both of these completely different programs. But if you assume that you're running one large application and that application is broken up into multiple different threads, you know, now you have a multi-threaded application where, you know, these two threads are possibly sharing data. Okay, so, you know, since they belong to the same application, there is perhaps a page in memory over here which has data that is common to both of these threads. Okay, so let's say that this page has physical address PQR. Okay, so this page is going to be mapped or is going to be visible to the virtual address spaces of both of these threads. Okay, and you know, based on the programming model or based on the library that is in use, it is possible that you know this this physical page is mapped to different virtual page numbers. Okay, so uh, thread one perhaps has this page mapped to a given location in its virtual address space, and this location is perhaps called ABC. And that same page is mapped to a different location in thread 2's virtual address space. And so it may have a different name, let's say ABB. Okay, so now we have a case where there's a single piece of shared physical memory which is being referred to by two different names by two different threads. Okay, so this is called aliasing, where there are multiple names for the same single piece of physical memory. Okay, so now let's see you know how this might introduce a problem with caching. Okay, so if core 1 is the first to access this page ABC, it has a missing cache and it says, you know, let me get this page from physical memory. Okay, so let's say that you're dealing with virtual addresses on the chip and then when you have to go off chip, you know, since now you're accessing physical memory, you do need the translation. So when you go off chip, you first do a translation and you say, well, this virtual address corresponds to physical address PQR. So now I can get the data. And now when you bring the data in, you put it in cache and you say, well, you know, since I'm on chip, let me try to use my virtual name if I can. And so I keep this block in cache and I call it ABC. So now when thread 2 accesses the same page of data, it is calling it by a different name. So it's actually looking for a copy of ABB. And it doesn't realize that there's already a copy sitting over here because this copy has been saved under a different name. So it has a cache miss, so it goes ahead and gets, you know, the, the page PQR from memory brings it in and then keeps it in cache in a different place and calls it ABB. Right? So because of this aliasing problem you now have two different copies of the same piece of data. And so when thread 1 makes changes to it, those changes only happen locally and when thread 2 makes changes to its copy of data, it happens to, to the version that is named ABB and these two versions will start deviating from each other. Right? So one thread does not see the updates being made by a different thread. So clearly this is wrong. This is not what the programmer might have initially intended, right? Because, you know, these are threads that are part of the same application. The change made by one thread should be visible to other threads as well. Okay, but because if we've used virtual names, we have this problem. Okay, so ultimately what you need to do is that you need to make sure that when you bring a copy into cache, you refer to it by its physical name, PQR. Okay, and this ensures that even though T1 is calling this piece of data ABC, if you convert ABC to its physical name PQR and likewise this one converts its name ABB to PQR, both of these different threads will agree that you know here's one single cache copy of that piece of data and we will both use that cache copy. So when I make changes to it, it is visible to some other thread that is also dealing with the same data. Okay, so what we've essentially concluded over here is that instead of using the virtual name on the chip, it would be best if I used physical names and that helps deal with this aliasing problem right because once you once you move to physical addresses uh, every piece of data has its has a unique name and so there will be no confusion 
Okay, so how does this affect my my pipeline, right? So I said that you know here's my core. It issues a load request. So what it's producing is a virtual address. Okay, and now you know I need to look up my cache, and so my L1 cache has its data arrays, and it has its tag arrays. Okay, and what I'm claiming now is it would be great if everyone used a physical name. So the first thing I need to do is look up the TLB and convert this virtual address into a physical address. So, you know, the core produced a load saying load ABC. That has been converted into PQR. The cache copy of that block, you know, does have a tag saying this is PQR. Okay, so when I look up my cache, I read out this block of data. I read out these tags. Okay, and then I compare you know the requested address PQR to what is saved in the tags and this ends up being a cache hit so the data then gets sent back to the CPU right so this is how things should behave ideally right and this way even if the core were to issue a request for ABB that gets converted into PQR and then the rest of the access is going to be exactly the same so you know two different threads will both have a cache hit you know for that piece of data okay so you know this is how things should behave ideally the main problem is that now I have made the TLB access part of the critical path. Okay, so we had said before that uh, you know these these programs are full of loads and stores. You know, maybe 30% of all instructions are loads and stores, even higher in some in some programs. And as as a result, you know those instructions have to be handled as quickly as possible. So we went to great pains to design a small L1 cache that had a one cycle access time. But now you know the TLB lookup itself could take one cycle. Okay, and I'm doing these sequentially. So if I first look up the TLB and then I look at the L1 cache, I'm now making my uh, my loads have a latency of two cycles. Okay, and so every single load and store is going to be penalized an extra cycle, and that hurts performance. 